When it comes to a college campus, a conservative is by far the most discriminated upon. And since they aren't recognized and privileged with that coveted minority status, they get almost no protection from their attackers. Tolerance at UC Berkeley, everybody. What tolerance no support like. from school administrators and no wall-to-wall -wall mainstream national coverage when they face abuse. Don't believe me? Watch this. I want to start with one of the most egregious examples of conservatives being targeted and physically attacked for their beliefs. Back in February, a recruiter was harassed and punched in the face at UC Berkeley. <laughs> Imagine if a mob of students wearing Make America Great Again hats went up to a liberal student and spray painted that student because they didn't like what they were saying. Just imagine the outrage. You're offensive. Police lives matter? This is our space. We've got a police lives matter sticker and we're getting kicked out. Can't do school. Nobody's kicking you out. You just said we have to leave. No, I said... You're making this space you uncomfortable. You uncomfortable. But you're white. Do you understand what a multicultural space? It means you're not being centered. Is white's not a culture? No. No, it's not a culture. It's white is not a culture. Say it again to the camera. You think whiteness is a culture? This is insane. So anyway, this is the violence that ASU does, and this is the type of people that they protect. Okay, this white man thinks he can take up our space, and this is why we need a multicultural space, because they think they can get away with this shit. We're asking you to leave if you have any consideration for people of color and are marginalized. This is the only space that you're not centered, and you're still trying to center yourself, which is peak white cis male bullshit. Those are just a few quick examples. There are countless more. I'm comedian Kayvon, and I've been told conservatives aren't funny, and they're all racist. So I paired up with Turning Point USA to bring my comedy show to San Diego State University. We created this quick documentary so you could get an inside look and judge for yourself. 7.5, come on. The faster you run, the faster you get it over with. Yesterday I was in Augusta, Georgia, and got to the airport at 4 a.m. East Coast time. That's 1 a.m. California time. And I was trying to get over to San Diego because we have a big show tonight and the pilot called in sick. I had to make a decision, come late to San Diego or take a $250 Uber ride for three hours to Atlanta from Augusta. Which one do you think I did? I try to do about three or four miles before every show. That wakes up my mind, my body. You don't want to wake up out of bed and go do a comedy show. You're going to be sleepy and then your crowd will be sleepy too. And since tonight's show is for Turning Point USA, I'm not listening to music, techno, house, rap, I'm listening to the Charlie Kirk podcast before I go do a show for the group he started. And uh, the show starts in an hour and 15 minutes, so we gotta crank up the speed and get this mile over with. There might be some girls there. This is San Diego, so you need the biceps to be popping. Conservative women, by far the hottest. <sighs> Means you won't have to argue with them every day if you put a ring on it. You never want your girl to say, well, the ladies on The View said, uh -uh. If that's coming out of the mouth, it's gonna be an argument every night at the dinner table. 459. All right, 460. Let's just. Now, another reason I go to the gym a lot is to give my opening act a chance to use the shower for a good 30 minutes before I need it. So when I come through this door, he better be completely done with all bathroom duties. It's my time to shine, and we're late for the show. Let's go. Yo, Justin. Yo. Are you dressed? Yeah. We got a cameraman coming in. So what are you going to be wearing tonight? It's always the same. Black pants, black underwear in case my shirt comes untucked, black socks. So you can wear them three days in a row if you need to. You don't want to, but you know, you're on the road. And a black t-shirt. Boom. Johnny Cash. You can't go wrong. And if you lose an item, you can find it at Walmart, Target, H&M, or your local hardware store. The left? It's weird. Like, you see the left would, before, would laugh at. We're a little bit more accepting about material, but... Now they seem a little bit tighter. Sometimes when we're on the road, we got a lot of downtime. Kevin wants to do these uh, sketches, little funny videos, so we'll film some stuff in the airport, um, on the plane, and just messing around, doing whatever his followers, uh, <laughs> whatever uh, bothers them. That's the kind of <laughs> stuff we film. About to get on this flight here. I look around. Get his stupid shirt. <laughs> What a shirt. Hey, man. 
Uh, that shirt, man, is really offensive, man. My shirt? Yeah. You know what it means? It just, it's a NASCAR shirt. No, man, that's not, you know, it, you know, you should just take that shirt off, man. It's my only shirt. I'm not going to take my shirt off. Man. And what, what, dude, your mask, man. You're not even, you don't even have your mask on. You don't need a mask when you're eating fries. I'm eating my fries. You know what? <laughs> hey, what the, dude. bro. Please. Oh, Please. I wasn't going to massage. You know what? No, hey, hey, hey. Really? Wow. You know what? This is going on in America. I wore the Let's Go brand and it has 2.5 million. 2.5 million for a Let's Go Brandon uh, sketch. He was wearing a shirt and I was being this Karen. And I confronted him and did all this little buy. I saw that. You saw that one? I did. 2.5 million. <laughs> it's all It's all cave on. It's just my voice. Cool, good. And bro, your shirt sucks, bro. What? It just sucks, bro. Okay, conveyor belt over this way then. No, nah, keep going that way, bro. That's what I thought. I'll meet you at the rental car. Um, he gets all the uh, all the credit and um, all the um, all the uh, financial gain from the views and ads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he didn't get any money for that. Sorry. I guess it has to be over three minutes. So, but the other stuff, it should be able to get a lot of money. <laughs> so we're gonna need this because we're doing an outdoor show. nice crowd good time cold evening um cold san diego evening yep cold san diego evening nice 50 degree weather in february do we have to have police officers no we do not we have to have elite security elite security elite security so how did you get involved in turning point um i got involved in turning point right out of high school when i came here would it be safe to say you're considered a black student yes I am a black student here at San Diego State. <laughs> so are people just shocked that you're part of Turning Point or you're not supposed to do that or you ain't black? Like yes. Well, I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. It don't have nothing to do with Trump. That I actually had a professor call me an Uncle Tom to my face. No way, um, a professor? Yeah, a professor. I didn't, I didn't know she was a professor until like she was like leaving. Wow. And it was very shocking. I did not get her name, unfortunately. So. We'll go look for her tonight. Yeah, so being a conservative is like pretty rare on college campus. To be honest, I wasn't even involved in politics at all. In college, it was parties and fraternity stuff and girls and study sometimes. Yeah. Do you think students are more political now than they were 20 years oh, ago? Oh, absolutely. So I, it's not my fault then? It's I, not my fault I wasn't political no, in 1999? No, I, I wouldn't hide yourself up like that. <laughs> <laughs> but now you almost have to have a cause or a, a platform. Or I feel like a lot of people convince themselves to be part of politics because it's the new thing. It's what's hip. It's what's happening right now. Right. When in reality, a lot of them don't really know what they're talking about and they're just in it for the clout, in it for the attention, but then when they really get down to the nitty gritty, like some of us, you're right. then, you know, that's when like you find your passion. That's when you know, like, this is why you're here. This is why you do what you do. You're wise beyond your years. So. Oh, thank you, thank you. And it, it helps that you go against what everyone would assume your political leanings would be or your activism. It would be so easy for you to be on the other side where it's safe and cozy, but you put yourself way out on the limb. Yeah, I think that's really what life is just all about, putting yourself outside of a comfort zone and constantly exploring and pursuing truth. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is uncomfortable. Who would have thought being a conservative was counterculture and punk rock and we're, we're the dangerous kids on campus, we're not supposed to be here right now, we're trying to shut us down. Who would have thought? There's already a little crowd forming out there. Mm -hmm. They've got their phones. I wonder how many are students and how many are townies. Uh, we are practically sold out of student tickets right now um, and general admission tickets. We sold out of VIP and sit up close tickets. Sweet. So when I announced this show, the feedback from people all over the US, instant name recognition. You're doing a turning point event? Oh my God, things have gotten real. I've done shows in big theater, small theaters, NBC, Netflix, but this one turned more head than anyone. Mm -hmm. Because 
It's counterculture being a conservative comedian in 2022, 23, and 24. Yeah. In that next election, that's when we're going to really... Oh. We're going to be very important in three years. Yes, so. we are. For sure. We're going to be saying, let's go Brandon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if he's still around. Oh. You <laughs> see, he's got to make it three more years. He, this, you got to leave me on the stage. Oh, my God. We'll have our Joe Biden moment. <laughs> Wait, what, what, do I get pudding? Hey. <laughs> So the way the show was supposed to be was it was supposed to be in a theater called the Aztec Theater. And they said, if you do it there, you need three police officers because of the safety, the safety. This is just a way that college campuses will often throw roadblocks. A student group can't afford three police officers at $100 an hour each for a minimum of two to three hours. So then they said, all right, you have to do it outside in the courtyard. It's more dangerous to be in a courtyard than in a theater because if there were to be anything to go wrong, there's Tons of people out here who could heckle, squirt guns, water balloons, bricks, throw eggs, who knows? So you're a freshman, you have common sense, you got into the school, but obviously you're dumb as f nations, they must truly, they must truly fit you. Okay, goodbye, goodbye then. <laughs> I... I'm not that, thank you gentlemen, I appreciate your support, but I'm not that intimidated by these guys. <laughs> Why are you shaking? Why are you shaking? Why are you shaking? Study yourself. Study yourself. Why are you shaking? Stop shaking. No racist police. No justice. No peace. Shut the up. Police. Shut up. But anyways, we made a makeshift stage in the courtyard of San Diego State University campus. We put out 130 chairs. The campus then made a rule: everyone needs to wear masks outside and they need to have triple vaccination to come see the outdoor comedy show. So as you can see, they keep making it harder and harder, suppressing the ability to just tell some jokes, have some fun in February. I think that if people have their multiple vaccines and they're safe, fine, and those that didn't want it, they've had plenty of opportunities, they're, they're willing to take their chances and they have their own medical decisions. I don't mean to brag, I don't care, but I want you to know, double vaxxed, booster, flu shot, and I'm going to be honest, I have the shingle shot too. And I still get my period. What? Yes. Traveled, went to Mexico twice, did shows, meet and greets, never got COVID. Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. Seriously. So nice. So nice. <laughs> so I'm in the emergency room. I look weird. But, oh my god. I'm so 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 sorry. I passed out on stage. I got up, I did one joke and I felt so dizzy. You can see my eye, I fell in my eye. Oh my god. I can I cannot believe this happened. But the college campus is uh is playing by the rules that they've created. So that's why we're outside. That's why they're supposed to be wearing masks. I think everyone will be eating and drinking the whole show. So the masks won't go on much and uh, we'll see how comedy is outside. We're having a comedy show tonight. Um, Kayvon is gonna rock our worlds with some great jokes and he's gonna bring um, laughter to America. <laughs> How did you hear about the show? Uh, we saw him in La Jolla a few months ago. They tried to throw so many roadblocks that we would just say no to the show and make it as unpleasant as possible, but uh, to our surprise, we kind of have a very unique background. It's an outdoor beautiful winter night in San Diego, and maybe this will be a night to remember. Arches, it keeps the laughs bouncing around. We got Christmas lights, and we got a pretty cool stage. I'm into it. How did you hear about the show? I'm not in it. <laughs> How did you hear about it? Yeah. Uh, from the USA. I want to give the front row, they paid double to be here, so I want to give them some gifts, some tchotchkes, mugs. That way people keep coming to the front row. The VIP, baby. Looking forward to it. Uh, All the way from Las Vegas, please provide a warm welcome for
for comedian Kayvon. Give a hand to yourselves for coming out here. Come on, this is fantastic. Come on, where's all the freshmen at? Make some noise. Freshmen. Okay, there's no freshmen here. There are no freshmen on a college campus. Wow. Okay, sophomores, make some noise! We have one sophomore with us. Are you guys excited there's a turning point right here on this campus? I know I am. That's so cool! The school wanted us to be safe, so we had a beautiful theater called the Aztec Theater. Clap if you ever heard of the Aztec Theater. Clap if you heard of it. Clap, clap, clap. We had that reserved for three months, and then they're like, we don't want you to get sick. <laughs> and if students are indoors, you could get sick. I said, so what do you want to do? Cancel the show. We don't want them to get sick. I said, no. They said, or they can be outside in the winter <laughs> in San Diego. So they don't want us to get COVID, but pneumonia is fine! <laughs> How many people had trouble finding this little courtyard? <laughs> Did you even know this would be a comedy club? I mean, look, this, I feel like we're in the mall somewhere and we could get escorted out in any moment. And look, it's so cool. We're here on a Friday night. There's no drinking, no alcohol, no drugs. These are the biggest dorks in San Diego. Look at this one I'm looking at. Yes, conservatives. We're having a safe night outdoors. <laughs> Masks are used in surgery by doctors who have unlimited masks. They don't go to the gym in their mask, go on a Tinder date in their mask, and then come back and do your open heart surgery in that mask. My mask, I've had the same disposable mask for the entire pandemic. I, I'm telling you, I'm not proud of it. I, I don't even know where it is. So it, it, it ends, look at this thing. Does this look clean to you? Would you let me do your surgery after I put, this has fallen on the bathroom floor. If you swab it, it has COVID-19, 20, 21, and a new strain, 22, right there. It has Delta, Omicron, uh, a few Alpha Chi Omegas have been on there, and two Pi Phi's. It, it went to a sorority party. It's been around. It's, who's triggered? Who's triggered? I'm sorry. This is not a safe space. This is an outdoor space. Sorry. The science. All about science. What happened in the tunnel stayed in the tunnel. Come up here, please. She's the one who reached out, put on this show, and made it happen. Overcame all the obstacles. Thank you so much. It was hilarious. I was laughing. It was great. It was wonderful. It was awesome and wonderful to laugh during this time. Honestly, first five minutes, I was like, oh, okay, I can actually sit here in the cold. Like, this is actually yeah, worth it. Okay. Yeah. I'm so glad the turnout was good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just so you just so you know. Oh, very funny, very funny. I love K1. <laughs> You've seen K1 before? Uh, uh, not in person, only on YouTube. But yeah, this was great. Free speech, all great. <laughs> I was skeptical about coming at first, but like, honestly, I'm really glad. We drove 40 minutes. Yeah, well, oh, I drove like. What, over an hour? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I mean, that was awesome. I loved the show. It was worth coming through all the traffic. You drove from Russia? Well, not today. <laughs> today was just delayed, but yeah, I'm from Russia. So I need to Oh, sure. Thank Who's you. this one for? Susan. It was an awesome show. Thank you so much. How was it? It was fun, man. It was fun. It went well. I mean, I thought it was going to be a little bit harder because we're outdoors. The highest ceiling, plus there's like an open air on the side. And ideally, you, for like a comedy club, you want like a low ceiling, kind of right on top of them. But you know, it worked out. It worked out great, actually. This is probably the most fun college gig I've had forever. How did your dog like the show? He liked it a lot. We just had a great show. The crowd was fantastic. I noticed it was kind of sparsely filled, but by the end of the show, every seat was taken. They were putting out new folding chairs. And uh, high five, SDSU. Yeah. Turning Point SDSU? And I think we're gonna take this tour to every single Turning Point in the USA if they want it. It's time to laugh and uh, we gotta get ready because if we can laugh before the next election, we'll be clearing the path for something good in 2024. That's what we'll do. Get out of here! <laughs>